It can impact anyone, but suicide takes the lives of veterans at a disturbing rate. 17 veterans across the country take their own lives each and every day. On the heels of September and Suicide Awareness Month, I went in depth with the VA on their mission to make sure every veteran can get life-saving help when they need it. The mission's not over with, so everybody's in their own driveway at home with their family safely. For the men and women who serve, coming home is often the hardest part. Wesley Hazel spent 12 years in the infantry. He was trained to look for threats. Because over there, you don't, you know, the person waving at you one minute might be the person that's planning on harming you the next. So everything's hypervigilance. Plus, even when you're deployed with your buddies, the bond is completely different than you'd have a bond at home. You know, you trust them more than you trust your own family when you get home sometimes. But the person who came the closest to taking this soldier's life was himself. In a state where 9% of men and women serve, Alabama veterans made up 18% of all suicides in 2020. When somebody gets really quiet, especially veterans, first responders, or just any average person, the mind will have that little seed of something bad and it will just spontaneously grow into this huge thing. Well, you have to have somebody that you can trust to talk to that can help you bring yourself back to reality. Hazel avoided becoming a part of this grim statistic by doing just that, but it wasn't easy. The phone weighs a thousand pounds. It's, it's so heavy to pick up to ask for help because you have pride, you have, you know, worries of confidentiality, you have worries of how they're going to take it, what their reaction is going to be. What was the moment that got you to pick it up? I uh, became a really bad alcoholic. Really bad alcoholic. Um, and, uh, and I'd hit a low point. And I had considered very, very much of taking my own life. And I had hit completely just face planted rock bottom. And there was no other option for me to do. And I didn't want to lose my family. I didn't want to lose everything that I had. And I finally, actually, I didn't pick up the phone for help. My wife picked it up for me, and she handed me the phone. What do you think would happen if your wife didn't hand you that phone? I wouldn't be here, probably. Melissa Evans is the program manager for the Birmingham VA Suicide Prevention Program. Her team of five social workers and part-time staff are the voice on the other end of the phone when someone calls their crisis hotline. We support each other and so it might be that we're on the phone with the veteran having that conversation of trying to like figure out what can we do, how can we, but we're messaging our team saying I need somebody to call an ambulance to this veteran's house right now. They also provide substance and mental health counseling to high-risk veterans. It's the staffers who Hazel's wife credits with her husband's turnaround. Those two are the ones that really got everything going. I mean, I might have stopped it in that moment and saved his life in that moment, but they've saved our life in the following moments that, that, where they stepped in and got him the help that he needed and helped me walk through helping him. And Brenda, in speaking with the VA, they talked about a crucial piece of legislation, the updated Compact Act, which went into effect. And it means that the VA will pay the cost of emergent suicidal care for eligible veterans at any emergency room. It does not have to be a VA hospital. And it also covers transportation and treatment for inpatient and outpatient care for a limited time. A reminder if anyone you know is suffering a suicidal crisis, call the national hotline by simply dialing 988.